We recently covered the impressive ancient dwellings known as dolmens, which can be found littering most of the European countryside. Enormous ancient structures which we feel were left by a surviving, less capable branch of an earlier civilization, still possessing advanced knowledge allowing them to build with such stones. Surviving remnants of the group, we also believe, were responsible for the masterfully constructed ancient ruins which can be found upon the same continents. Additionally, this era within human history was the inspiration for an animated TV show namely the Flintstones. Curiously, the Flintstones, dubbed the modern Stone Age family, could easily be mistaken for a lost advanced civilization. Did the makers of the Flintstones know something we are currently unraveling regarding the builders of the Flintstones' homes, namely the dolmens? Or is it all a mere coincidence? Some of these dolmens still possess as yet unexplained evidence which flies in the face of academics worldwide. Sites such as the Dolmen of Menga, found near Malaga in Spain. This massive dolmen, one of the largest megalithic sites in Europe, is a prime example of the unexplained features which defy current explanation. The dolmen is 902 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 115 feet in height. It was built with 32 megaliths, the largest of which weighing over 200 tons. Nearby is another impressive dolmen, known as De Vera, discovered between 1903 and 1905 by brothers Antonio and José Vera of Antiquera. This site also possesses some of the most impressive megaliths to be found in any dolmens anywhere in Europe. Who built these incredible structures? How did they build them? La roche -à -Fille, in the French department of ille vilaine in the Brittany region, was named after a legend claiming that the stones were brought by fairies, this clearly inspired by their inexplicable nature. A name of fairy rock was given to many French dolmens or covered walkways. Regardless of whether our own theory is correct, the still surviving features of many of these ancient dolmens is clearly in direct contradiction with attested theory. Further alternative study is desperately needed of structures we find highly compelling. There are many ancient stories derived from religious texts which, when taken literally, are simply illogical, easily disproven as that of a symbolic nature rather than literal documentation of true events. However, there are a rare few contested as literal truth and a handful of these for good reason. The conviction is that these events left such a lasting impression on the creators of these texts and ancient scrolls that they included them within their writings. One of these being that of the so-called legend of the Tower of Babel. Once declared as a symbol of oppression, it is now argued by many as simply being merely another symbolic myth such as many other stories found within religious writings. However, there are numerous details which cannot escape the microscope of some investigators. And now that a brick has been found, legitimately dated to this time, and commissioned by the same claimed king, the argument for the actual past existence of this incredible structure has gained traction within even the most skeptical academic mind. A brick, stamped with the seal of the ancient Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar II, biblically stated as the man who commissioned the construction of the tower itself has been discovered. Dr. Irving Finkel of the British Museum said, quote, When you look at the early chapters of the Bible, it is clear that some of it is drawn from the Judeans' own records. It incorporates narratives which they must have encountered for the first time in Babylon, some so powerful and striking that the authors who worked on the Hebrew texts incorporated them to tell their own story. He continued, In the book of Genesis, what we have here is a brick which fits exactly into that specific context. There can be no doubt that the stimulus for the story and the narrative must have taken shape during the Babylonian exile. The evidence could help to prove the existence of the Tower of Babel, 
its story written by a desperate population in exile held captive by a ruthless king." End quote. Yet, as always, regardless of the corroborating evidence, it will, like the many other details and aspects of the claimed tower, continue to encounter dismissal by many. With even those who are convinced of its past existence, in disagreement over its original location. Logic would suggest that, if built, it was within ancient Babylonia, some 500 miles from Jerusalem. Yet some argue it was actually built somewhere else, within the Middle East. Regardless of these disagreements, we find the brick, its still intact mortar, Dr. Finkel's quotations, and indeed, its intriguing seal, highly compelling. Here at Mystery History, we cover the unexplained areas of antiquity, either ignored, avoided, dismissed, or simply given an incomplete or often illogical historical lifeline of existence by mainstream academia, particularly those which we have covered of significant size, quarried from many miles away, now often immovable, and once transported, and either erected or placed atop one another seemingly effortlessly. We were, in a past series of investigations, looking into an interesting quarry within the Bazda cave system on the edge of Turkey, a place with particularly good granite and a proven source of stone for numerous megalithic sites many miles around. Later proven by us via the preserved linkages in tool marks to have been used by more than one group as if they had coalesced at this particular site. Yet, as mentioned, we have long argued that not just one advanced civilization capable of moving and cutting these incredibly monumental megalithic stones, or indeed precisely cut them, have been and gone, and we feel we have and continue to provide sufficient proof of these claims. The Colossi of Memnon, said to have once sang at sunrise, are both made of stones thousands of tons in weight, yet are eroding to dust along with countless others, yet clearly once precisely cut, just like all the other stone ruins we cover worldwide. Yet sites like Petra and the polygonal casing stones found in some most curious of places such as the pyramids of Egypt preserving stones in a similar condition to the Colossi. Certain stone monuments of gigantic size, found and stored in near-perfect condition, are found in these same areas, as if somehow spared catastrophe. Does this prove a sudden great flood? They regardless, we claim, prove several cycles of activity at stone-cutting creation. Were some monuments submerged and therefore preserved under the sediments? like those secretly removed from the pyramids and sphinx during initial investigations? Did the ruins claimed as similarly dated not? Or were they attacked by a geological event? The perfect preservation of some of these statues must eliminate sandware as a possibility. The pursuit to the answers to these questions become closer, and we feel highly compelling. Lake Titicaca, undoubtedly a location of extraordinary history, a shoreline known by the historical world for a substantial time as somewhere of considerable interest, having been inhabited for an unknown yet incredibly long time, with legends of large antediluvian highly developed cities plummeting to the bottom of its lake, thus claimed as modern locals as revered, yet also the source of life. But I digress. Polygonal structures still litter its shores and further afield in other watercourse connected regions. Known as chilpas, these most intriguing of stone structures still stand here, built with pre Incan polygonal technological precision, with varying qualities and types of stones, also with stone brick and overall statures of various sizes. They are claimed as spherical burial chambers, yet the precision that went into their construction is evident from without, and also from within among the few that have inevitably fell to nature over time. 
The most concentrated area of these enigmatic structures are located at a site known as Puna Cemetery. The Silustani Cholpas surround an adjacent lagoon to Lake Titicaca, and just like the others found in other sparsely scattered regions, were all built with extraordinary precision, built into perfectly circular towers with a perfect pre-Incan polygonal masonry technique. Therefore, we feel the possibility that they were once made by a now lost civilization has strong evidence to suggest so, still present within their builds for all to see. Furthermore, if indeed they were tombs, as claimed, is a possibility we find highly intriguing. For if true, parallel to the fallacious claims of the great tombs of Egypt, then these many still intact structures would still possess the remains of a now lost civilization. It is a possibility, and indeed collection of buildings which we find highly intriguing. Takeshi Onamata, an archaeologist for the National Institute of Statistics and Geography within Mexico, recently made an astonishing discovery in a most unlikely of ways. Before modern technologies, the only real way to investigate an ancient site was to visit the area and either excavate specific places of interest or simply observing said sites from the ground level. However, thanks to modern radar and LIDAR systems, the sites can now be scanned and then observed in depth from afar. However, to implement such technologies on a certain site of interest is incredibly expensive, something Takeshi knows all too well. After investing $62,000 on a LiDAR scan of an area a mere 35 miles in size, he unfortunately returned no new discoveries in the area. This initially disappointed Takeshi, but a few months later, after researching previous investigations in the area, he was incredibly excited when he came across a previous LiDAR scan, one originally made by Mexican official studies of the area. He found a treasure trove available for free online. Published in 2011, it covered an astonishing 4,440 mile square and covers the areas of Tabasco and Chiapas, in which Takeshi has since discovered an additional set of 27 ancient ruins, all previously hidden within this public access map. This not only expands our understanding of these claimed Mayan ruins, but also expands the breadth of this astonishing, now lost civilization's reach, and indeed, the original size of their mega metropolis, which covers many hundreds of miles square and is now estimated to have once been inhabited by at least 10 million individuals. Takeshi learned about the map via Rodrigo Liendo, an archaeologist from the National Autonomous University of Mexico. The ruins stood out to Inomata immediately, and now, thanks to his work, we have a number of once lost but now found ruins, all of which demand further exploration if we are ever to unravel the mysteries of our past. We can see a much better picture of the entire society, Takeshi told the media. The stuff he is finding is crucial for our understanding of how Mayan civilizations developed, added Arlen Chase, an archaeologist at Pomona College. We will keep you posted on any further developments regarding these new discoveries, especially any future excavations. It is a find, a lost civilization, and indeed, an area of archaeological interest and intrigue, which we find highly compelling.